Hi, hello! In today's video I'm going to do a dedicated review of the Dries van Noten lipstick that I picked up last week. So, as some of you may know, if you have followed my channel for the past couple of weeks, at the very least, you will know that bougie lipsticks have been my newest obsession. I've really been into lipsticks this uh, past couple of weeks for whatever reason I've really been enjoying especially wearing like my brighter reds which is why I have toned down the eyeshadow quite a bit and I've been wearing a lot of browns and beiges lately. It doesn't bother me whatsoever because you know I go through cycles with my makeup and I think right now I'm in a bright bougie lipstick phase. And the bougie lipstick gates were opened in the beginning of the year when I bought the reformulated Rouge Dior lipsticks from Dior. I've talked about these lipsticks uh, quite a bit, I've mentioned them in quite a few of my videos, they just impressed me so much that all of a sudden a whole new world opened for me and I thought I need to try bougie lipsticks now because it seems like luxury brands really know what they're doing when it comes to lipstick these days. So since the Dior lipsticks I uh, purchased two Hermes lipsticks, I bought this Dries Van Ote lipstick and I also have two Prada lipsticks uh, on their way to me because I finally decided to place an order from the Prada Beauty line which was released a little over half a year ago. But today we're talking about Dries Van Ote. So if you didn't know Dries Van Ote is a Belgian fashion designer and they've mostly been doing clothes I think since the 70s but very recently about maybe like a, two years ago or so they launched a makeup line. From what I can tell the only truly makeup item that they currently have in their line are really lipsticks and what distinguishes these lipsticks from anything else that is on the market is the extremely cool and unique packaging. They have several different versions of the outer component of the lipstick. So this is the outer component of the lipstick that I selected. And if I remember correctly, this is called the neon print. And the reason I was attracted to it personally is the beautiful lime green part of the component here. The animalistic print isn't necessarily my thing, but I thought together with the lime green and it's not like the most trashy like fleshy kind of animal print I thought I can I can do it it's elegant enough for my taste so then I ordered the lipstick and I'm saying this specifically for my duchess here who would be curious where I got this lipstick from like where I ordered it I bought it off of the buy and Court website and the idea with these lipsticks is that you buy the component so the outer packaging component so these two parts come separately from the actual insert like the bullet component. You can buy them separately but from what I can tell this component doesn't really fit in any other component from a different luxury brand. On that note I just wanted to mention that real quick because it crossed my mind and then I forgot about it and then one of you reminded me on Instagram so I did try it. Um, the components from Dior and Hermes fit into each other's um, packaging, like outer packaging components. So if you ever wanted to swap around like a Dior lipstick and put it in an Hermes packaging, from what I could tell when I was swapping them around, they are interchangeable. So you get the bullet component with these little like plastic protectors around it, and then you get these uh, outer component parts and then you click in the lipstick in there quite easily, just like that. You hear a little click and then you can remove the top protector and just click the rest of the packaging. I don't necessarily always talk about outer box packaging of especially like lipsticks unless it's like a Pat McGrath lipstick which are a piece of art sometimes but I do want to mention this because I'm going to compare them to a lipstick from a different brand in a little bit. So the Dries von Noten components, the inner bullet component and the outer component came in these white boxes which honestly feel a little cheapy to me. Now, why am I saying this? Because the outer packaging of these, so just the outer component, I want to say was 37 euros. Let me check on the, the Buying Court of website. The outside part of the packaging costs 36 euros and the bullet component is 37 euros, which makes this Dries Van Oten lipstick by far the most expensive lipstick that I have ever bought. I want to break down the review of this lipstick into several different subcategories. First and foremost, I want to compare the wholesome experience and the outer packaging of this lipstick to a lipstick that is in a similar price range. And the only similarly bougie, similarly expensive lipsticks that I have in my collection currently are um, my two Hermes lipsticks. Yes, I purchased another Hermes lipstick which you might have seen already on my Instagram yesterday. So this is the original uh, lipstick that I bought from Hermes. The insert inside is no longer the color that I bought. But right now we're just going to talk about the packaging. 
I'm not going to beat around the bush and I'm going to say it out loud and I think some of you are going to disagree with me which is you know why we're all here and we all have a different perspective and a different taste. While I think the outer components of the Dries Van Oten lipsticks are very unique and uh, nothing that I've ever seen another brand do, I still think that overall in every single aspect that I can think of the outer packaging of Hermes remains superior to me. It is just classier, more elegant and most importantly it feels more luxuriously and more well made in terms of the quality. Uh, why is that? Let's start off with the little boxes. So as you saw these are the boxes in which the Dries Van Noten lipsticks came. They are made from extremely thin uh, white cardboard packaging, which is fine, we don't want to increase waste, so simple outer packaging like this reduces waste. But when you're charging 73 euros for a lipstick and then we compare the presentation of this to the presentation of Hermes lipstick, so the Hermes lipsticks come actually in this little pouch and the little pouch is fitted into the beautiful emblematic, you know, uh, orange Hermes box. And the box feels very luxuriously made and I've actually kept these inserts and it is in fact where I keep my um, Hermes lipsticks. So I put them like this and then I have them on display in, in this manner. Both of these are quite hefty in the hand and if I have to compare which one is weightier, if we were to put them on a scale, the one from Dries van Noten is probably going to be weightier than the one from uh, Hermes. But then let's break it down into the separate components. So like I said, the Hermes lipsticks are also refillable so you can also remove the insert and again you get the two different parts that fit together. First of all, did you hear that very satisfying click? Beautifully magnetic. Now if you were to do the same thing with the Dries van Noten lipstick, these two do not fit together. They are, there's no magnetic closure in here. And this might be very difficult to describe unless you're holding the two lipsticks, but to me this feels like something that is truly made to feel good quality and to feel luxurious. Not necessarily weighted, just so it feels heavier in the hand. When you look at the outside component, you can see that the, the walls of the actual outer packaging are not that thick. So you have the beautiful intricate logo over here of Hermes. And I have to say, this outer component also feels really, really beautiful to me. Uh, this, by the way, is a limited edition lipsticks. Their core line comes with this kind of packaging. So it has a gold, a black and a white very classy, very elegant. I find the like overall outer packaging of Hermes to just be classier and more elegant and that is a perfectly personal perspective. I think for other people maybe that would not be the case but I, I think that really comes down to your personal preference. For me something that is a little bit more of a clean design is a little bit more elegant and feels classier. And then I want to show you the inside of the Dries Van Oten lipstick because the Dries Van Oten lipstick, like I said, feels quite hefty in the head. But then if you look at the inside, you will see that the plastic inside is quite thick. The way this feels to me is two relatively cheap plastic components, not the cheapest but also not the most expensive, that are um, heavily filled with something to feel weighty because of this like thicker sort of wall. So when you break down the individual components of this lipstick, it just feels less weighty. It feels like wannabe luxury, whereas this just feels like pure luxury. But I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want anyone to take me wrong. This is a matter of personal taste and personal perspective. So I also don't want you to get me wrong, this doesn't feel cheap in the hand or not classy or not elegant. I just think that compared to the Hermes lipsticks, for me the Hermes lipsticks are in a league of their own. So far I have not seen another luxury brand make packaging that is quite as luxurious and uh, elegant in the hand as the Hermes one. The Dries Van Noten lipsticks come in several different finishes and I chose the matte finish and the reason for that being that one of you specifically very much piqued my interest in these, into these lipsticks because uh, you mentioned that these were even more comfortable, creamier and like literally the most comfortable matte lipsticks you have ever worn, even compared to Lisa Eldridge and Pat McGrath Labs, which immediately made me so incredibly curious about these lipsticks and especially the matte formula. The shade that I chose is this one here. This is Crafted Red and I chose red because I am a red lipstick lover and I really wanted to compare the formula of this with reds from the other two brands that I mentioned, specifically uh, Pat McGrath and Lisa Eldridge. Now let's talk about the color. 
I think the color of this lipstick is quite unique. I don't have a spot on dupe for this shade in my extensive red lipstick collection. So Crafted Red is a very interesting shade that is not a classic red, but it is also not a warm toned orange red. It just has this very interesting bright quality to it without being either too warm or too cool. It's almost like a neutral red with very bright qualities to it. It is just such an interesting and unique shade. And just for comparison purposes, I wanted to show you Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge because I, I was sort of under the impression that this is going to be a dupe for Lisa Eldridge Ribbon, but in fact they're very different from each other. As you can see, there is so much more blue in Ribbon compared to um, Crafted Red. A color that is rather similar in its tones but is just let, less saturated with red pigment is Strawberry Shock from Lisa Eldridge. So that is one of her insanely saturated uh, lipsticks. So this is the swatch uh, over here and you can see compared to Crafted Red they are sort of in the same color family but just on the spectrum of uh, a, bi a bit more red pigment, a bit less saturated with red pigment in favor of the white pigment. So to me really the closest dupe that I can think of for this lipstick in my collection is Strawberry Shock with the uh, with emphasis on this not being a spot on dupe. It's, they're just quite similar in tone. And finally I want to talk about the formula of this lipstick. Now the formula of this lipstick I will obviously be comparing to my Lisa Eldridge and Pat McGrath uh, lipsticks because those are the most comfortable matte lipsticks that I have in my collection. And the first thing I want to say is that Sometimes it's very hard to compare uh, lipstick formulas one-on-one -on -one because even within the same range you're going to have again a range of comfort depending on the color. From my point of view usually lipsticks that contain a lot of white pigment, so brighter colors, uh, colors that tend to be Think of something like the shade Obsessed from Pat McGrath Labs. Obsessed was my very first matte trans lipstick I ever bought and I didn't like it because I found it extremely drying. And to this day, out of my whole Pat McGrath matte trans lipstick collection, Obsessed remains the least comfortable one. I can make it work, but that lipstick can get quite drying and quite uncomfortable towards the end of the day. The same goes, I think, for very nude colors. If you have something that is like a very light beige or a very light pink, I think the comfort level of a color like this may also be wildly different from something like um, a pure classic red lipstick. So let's compare the formula of this to something like Elson or Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge. Now the formulas of Lisa Eldridge and Pat McGrath uh, are similar and yet a little bit different in the sense that the Pat McGrath lipsticks have a little bit of like that silicone slip to them so they glide. I mean I don't want to say that the Lisa Eldridge ones don't glide. They, they glide on the lips uh, quite comfortably too. But there is something about the formula of the matte trans that has that really like interesting like slip to it which I think comes from the silicones in the formula. If I have to compare which formula the Dries van Noten lipstick is more similar to, I would say to me this feels more similar to the matte trans from Pat McGrath Labs because these have that like very same like very nice glide and slip to the formula. And I can't say that I find this color to be particularly more creamy and particularly less drying compared to my comfortable uh, Lisa Eldridge and Pat McGrath lipsticks. So from the Lisa Eldridge line, the only lipstick that I can think of that is a red color and I find a bit more drying is Dragon. Dragon probably has a little bit more of like a white pigment to it and for whatever reason it's just more drying. But if I compare this lipstick to Ribbon, I don't find Crafted Red to be less drying or creamier than Ribbon. I don't find this shade to also be more comfortable throughout the day than something like Elson from Lisa Eld uh, from Pat McGrath Labs, excuse me. The Dries van Noten formula is very comfortable on the lips. It feels very comfortable throughout the day. It uh, wears away quite gracefully. It reapplies on, on itself very easily and it just feels comfortable all throughout the day. But the same goes for Ribbon and Elson. I can't say that any of these three lipsticks, any of them feel more drying compared to the other two. To me, because I'm comparing like somewhat similar shades in a way, uh, I find that the three have similar comfort levels and they apply, they feel and they wear quite the same throughout the day. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't really see these lipsticks as more comfortable compared to those other two formulas that I mentioned. Again, with 
keeping in mind that I think there's quite a range of comfort depending on the color. So I think if you're going to compare colors, you have to stick to sort of like the same color family. And this is the only lipstick that I have from Dries van Noten. I don't have other colors from uh, his line, so I can't really compare the comfort levels of other shades compared to these other brands. So I will stick to, for now, my opinion that to me this feels quite and wears quite similarly to these other two formulas. And because of that, I think when you're buying one of these, you really need to consider what exactly you are buying. Because the inner like the insert of this lipstick the refill of this is more exp uh, or is it more expensive no it is more or less in the same price range as a pat mcgrath match trans lipstick and it is more expensive than a lisa eldridge lipstick and lisa eldridge lipsticks are so exceptionally well made for what they are exploring these new bougie lipsticks has made me appreciate so much more the lisa eldridge line because of the price to quality ratio. What you're getting here is a fantastically made luxurious lipstick with a phenomenal formula for 30... I think these are now 32 euros on the European website. Whereas all of these other lipsticks are so much more expensive and you're not necessarily getting a better formula or a much more luxurious component. Yes, this is really really fun. The ones from um, Hermes are also just so beautiful and so interesting and I am honestly buying them because I like the outer packaging and I was very curious about the formulas but having tried all these formulas has really made me appreciate so much more what a deal what a steal we are getting with the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks so I really have nothing truly negative to say about this lipstick except for the fact that I think the luxurious price point of the outer packaging doesn't quite match with what you're actually getting. I just don't find the outer packaging of this to be extremely luxurious, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, I love the formula, I love the color, I love how unique it is, I enjoy every part of this lipstick quite a bit and I don't regret my purchase, but at the same time I don't feel compelled to buy more Dries van Noten lipsticks, whereas I feel extremely compelled to continue purchasing Hermes lipsticks. They have released now a collection for the summer that has my name written all over from the packaging to the actual colors. It will be either very hard to resist or I might get one of the lipsticks from that collection. So um, the Hermes lipsticks have spoken to me on a personal level whereas I have a lot of appreciation for the Dries van Noten one and I like having it in my collection but I think for the time being I will keep it to this uh, one shade and this um, like neon print packaging. I can't believe I had so much to say about that like one freaking lipstick so I really hope that you enjoyed this extensive mini review of Crafty Dread by Dries van Noten. Do let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comment section below. I'm sure we're going to disagree on some of these points and I'm very open to your opinion. I very much respect your perspective because I think um, style and like perception of what's good quality is very much shifted through you know personal prisms so i don't want to say that your opinion is wrong and mine is right i think we're all right in our feelings and uh, perspectives when it comes to these lipsticks but i just wanted to share mine thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye